Now, I thought I'd start off with an overview of the Australian health system. Now, uh, the opinion that I get from uh, a lot of people who aren't engaged in uh, politics or uh, public policy is that they like our health system as it is. They can go to a doctor any time and get it bulk billed if necessary, free of charge. They often look at, say, the American health system in horror and say, oh, look at all these people who don't have access to, to health care. And they say it's been working well for um, uh, 30 years. Uh, why do we need to uh, change it? Well, I think we always need to keep reforming, uh, whatever it happens to be, and uh, health and Medicare are no exception. Uh, the system on the whole has done reasonably well for 30 odd years, but when you think about the fact that we have a, a, an ageing population, that it, you know that uh, people over 65 are steadily getting older, then I mean, baby boomers like myself are, are starting to knock on the door of um, uh, the high need end of our lives. Um, I've hoped to have a little way to go before that happens myself. Um, but also because of changes in our, 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 our habits as a, as a society, our lifestyle habits, particularly in the way that uh, um, yeah, younger kids, kids and younger people aren't as, you know, you can't assume them to be totally healthy all the time and may perhaps uh, my generation were uh, in terms of uh, uh, the fact that you know do things like we're doing now, sitting down and talking, or be playing with your computer, being sedentary, not being active as uh, some some uh, certainly previous generations were. Uh, we're going to have a a surge of demand in the middle of the 21st century, which uh, I think we have to plan for, we have to anticipate, and we have to make sure that we can cope with uh, uh, people knocking on the door of not just the uh, hospital system but the health system as a whole and. Medicare itself, because it's been geared to uh, a world that is now past, you know, the world of the 1950s and especially the 1960s and 70s, is not necessarily fit for purpose in the way that it was even 10 years ago. So that was one of the reasons that the GP co-payment was a big issue in the 2014 budget, for instance. And obviously the Australian federal debt is now approaching uh, 600 billion. Uh, how much is of that is due to health expenditure or increases in health expenditure? Well, roughly the health budget's about $160 billion a year. I mean, that's in terms of total health spending, uh, federal and state. But then again, you've got to keep in mind that the federal government actually contributes a lot to state spending on health through public hospitals as well. And then there's private health and private health insurance. I mean, uh, out-of-pocket expenses as well as uh, your private health insurance premium. So, uh, that's quite a lot of money and of course if uh, the, the federal government is, is forking out uh, a probably by far the major share of that 160 billion uh, that's a big uh, big call on uh, the Treasury on, on your your and my tax resources and that's a that's a real problem and that's again uh, we have to be able to afford uh, the system into the future not to, and actually it's not just demand as I was saying before it's also the cost of of healthcare in terms of uh, the fact that we can do far much more, far, far more than we could ever do before, uh, particularly in terms of keeping people alive longer uh, with the benefits of medical technology, whether it's uh, new treatments, whether it's machines that go ping, whether it's uh, um, you know, you, the medicines you take, those high cost drugs that uh, uh, keep people going. And the fact that we can do that uh, but do it at a cost is something I don't think that we as a community and as a policy uh, issue have had a, a really a decent discussion about and frankly because of the way that people don't like to talk about these things and sweep them under the carpet uh, we probably won't have a conversation at all. Uh, one of the, the health issues that you've written about quite a bit is uh, preventative uh, health. Uh, obviously, if we prevent people uh, you know, getting ill, that saves us a lot of money in the, the longer term. But how is that achieved in uh, public policy? Well, I think, Tim, part of the problem is politics when it comes to prevention or primary care, uh, like going to the GP. Um, so that you head off more expensive treatments, whether it's specialists, whether it's hospitals, whatever. Um, uh, we don't, uh, uh, you know, politics comes down to things like public hospitals, public hospital waiting lists, waiting times, um, ambulances, you know, going on bypass, uh, bricks and mortar, you know, uh, uh, the hospital beds. Uh, the fact that 
many things can be treated far better and smarter these days out of hospital rather than in hospital is something that gets lost in political debate because it's easy for the oppositions of the day and that could be the coalition or it could be Labor to actually score points at both the federal and state level by going to the pressure points that they know score uh, political points as well and that usually comes down to to public hospitals or what uh, one uh, uh, leading expert in the in the field, one of the architects of Medicare, actually, called um, cathedrals of care. I mean, uh, uh, it's good to go to a cathedral, but uh, you don't want to actually go there every week, do you? So, it's important, I think, to bring the public conversation along with the uh, advances in the way that we can treat people, so that people actually accept that things are going to be done better if they're done differently to what they're used to or what the politicians tell them is uh, is right and what's and tell them what's wrong. In my initial question, I, I talked about how uh, a lot of people are worried about uh, uh, us being without the uh, safety net, as you call it. As I mentioned, they uh, even though it's a bit inaccurate the way they view the American health system, they, they, they worry about that there won't be health care for the most vulnerable. Do you accept that um, Australians do expect there to be a, a, sa a safety net for, for health for the most vulnerable? Uh, I think uh, yes for the most vulnerable, but I think the problem is, Tim, that uh, too many people, uh, particularly people who can afford to make a reasonable contribution to their health care, particularly if they don't uh, need to use the system very often, maybe because they go to the doctor a few times a year, for instance. Um, I, I still struggle to think and understand why they believe that bulk billing should be absolutely sacred. I mean, they, you know, the left, the left like to talk about the slippery slope if you uh, change the rules of bulk billing that uh, you're going to get rid of it ultimately altogether. But frankly, uh, I think people people like, like myself, you know, professional on a reasonable income, uh, should be able to sort of be charged or make a contribution to going to the doctor a few times a year or uh, or uh, making sure that I have private health insurance. I mean, the fact that less than half the population, including obviously far, even less, far less than half the affluent population don't uh, do have private health insurance as opposed to rely entirely on the public system. I, frankly, I think is wrong. I think uh, it's not just a, 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 a policy disgrace. I think it's actually a, a breakdown in um, uh, personal values uh, that uh, if you really want to help uh, those who are less well off, you uh, you do, you, you know, it's a bit like uh, uh, the safety drill in a, in a you know, in an aeroplane when you're about to take off and the, they talk about the oxygen masks, you actually, uh, they, what do they say, uh, that uh, um, put, put your own mask on before you try and help others. And uh, when it comes to contributing to the cost of your own health care, I think that's exactly what that's all about. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.